say teacher leader so often. I mean, that is a, that's a very specific word. If you are a teacher, you've got a certificate, you've got a classroom, and if you are a leader, then obviously you are at club. But we want to be more inclusive in, in our definition of what that is um, for the sake of the elementary music teacher who wants to lead wildlife. And so that that, that person would know that she is, whether we term it on campus leader, like we haven't worked out the details of the language, but as you look at your teams, um, we want you to, to cast wide the net on who is building relationships through their employment and then doing ministry with Young Life, because that's, that's who we're talking about. So it could be a classroom teacher like I was, or a bus driver, or security guard. Elementary school teachers are this vast, untapped market. Mm -hmm. There are so many elementary teachers who love Jesus, have, who spent an entire year with this fourth grader, who's going into the sixth grade now, who would kick ass as a wildlife leader, and we just never ask them. So as you're praying about um, gone campus leaders in your area, I would encourage you specifically to think of that group. Um, another thing that Jeff and I had talked about is meaningful ways for those people to be involved if leading full time is more than they can wrap their life around. So Hoop and I and our team have a couple of ideas that we're cooking on for this year. One, one we're calling, well I'm calling it, I'm calling it the welcome wagon. Inviting them to come to the first, like so we start club at 7, so inviting them to come from 6.30 to 7.15 and high five kids at the door and play foosball with them. So no actual um, club responsibilities, but that relationship invitational space um, where they can be involved and get to see kids outside the classroom. Maybe as a stepping stone to being a leader, but definitely not, not sold that way and not a, no expectations with that. Because I think that, if you can smell the bait and switch in the water as a teacher, you're, heck no, I'm not, no, I'm not going to come be a welcome wagon because in six months you're going to ask me to do something else and I don't want to. <laughs> so my life is full up. Um, so just be straightforward, no yeah, secret. Yeah, be straightforward. No, it's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and of course, we can, I'm, I'm in this uh, Bible study about Paul and it's all talking about how he had this vision and he prayed and he prayed and it took years of being like, but it was prevented from happening. But he kept praying, specifically it was to get to Rome. And so I'm not saying don't pray that that person would become a leader because you can see how good they would be. But live in that tension of, this is what I want, but I don't expect them, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna be God's spirit moving in their hearts to do it. So, um, so the welcome wagon is one. Uh, we are planning a family feud night where it's teachers versus kids. And so, <laughs> It'll probably be in the spring just because of the way the calendar fell, but our leaders are actually going to, during their contact work, we're going to have a list of questions and we're going to ask them and we're going to keep track of answers, just have the top 100 answers on the board. And so giving teachers a fun and meaningful way to be involved in an entire club, but again, zero prep, you just show up and hit a buzzer. But that is another idea we have. Um, another way for teachers to be meaningfully involved is for their classroom to be your home base. Like when you go do contact work, like you can check in with them or have campaigners in that classroom. A lot of teachers, uh, as you well know, have, um, I can't think of the adjective. Prep period? Well, no, they have prep period. They're nervous about faith things happening in their room, right? And so that's often the reason why they don't step into Young Life Ministry is because I like my job and I want to keep it. So there are plenty of legal umbrellas for teachers, but whether they understand and walk under those is a different thing. And so have, um, asking them to host a campaigner group or have lunch in their room where you can hang out with the kids, um, but you're the adult in the room, so they can you know, run to the bathroom or go make copies, is a way for them to provide a service for Young Life, but again, without having to um, impinge on their understanding of what it would mean you know, for faith things to be happening in the classroom. There, yeah, yeah, in their room. Yeah. In their room. Well, that depends, that's school to school. Like, like, when I was teaching at Davis, kids just came and ate in my room. They weren't supposed to, because we had a new building, and so the administration was like, rah, rah, rah. but I'm not gonna kick a kid out. And so we didn't have Bible study or anything. They just hung out in my room. So we'd watch the sing-off on, I'd put the, put my 
computer up on the screen and watch the sing-off every week. And it was just hangout time. So for me, I'm like, ooh, contact work, you know, let's watch. We watched TV shows and stuff like that. And so if you're, if there is a teacher on staff who is willing for that, or a teacher in your schools who's willing for their space to be a place for you to just be with them, that might be a way, especially later in the year, once you've got a couple of relationships going, that is relationally more efficient at building relationships than in the cafeteria. At Davis's cafeteria, there are a thousand kids in the cafeteria at once. So, and at a table of 10, there could be four kids who know each other and four kids who don't know the other four, and that is a great opportunity as a leader to sit down and you know, build relationships there. But there's a different kind of conversation that's gonna happen there than is gonna happen in Mrs. Walden's room when all these kids have second lunch together. So, so those are some ideas um, about meaningful ways to engage teachers, especially those who aren't wanting to, or willing or ready to step in. Um, the other thing I just wanted to remind those of you who have been around in the one year that we have attempted to have a champion, woohoo! But the champion had a baby. When champions have babies, it's very difficult for them to champion much of anything other than one. Okay. <laughs> but not till April, you know? I got, I got, I got you know, seven whole months. So, but even in that space, I would love to do for, it, I would love for you as staff people to be able to communicate with your on-campus leaders that there is a, a resource for them who has, who has walked this. Like I was a young life leader and a full-time teacher for eight years. So I, I know, I know what the Washington legal codes are, I know where the gray areas are, where if you feel like skating on relatively thin ice, you probably could and get away with it. I have um, strategies for talking, to, I had a couple of, I know that this works because a couple of people, I think, who, who was in Spokane, or the, the leader was in a Spokane school, so I don't know what area that was, but she got my phone number, texted me, said, hey, I hear you're a teacher leader. How do I tell my principal that I'm going to camp with kids? So we had this big, long conversation about, do you have to tell them? She didn't want to. I'm like, well, you probably should, but here's the, here's the legal thing, and here's a relational, I, you know, a, a way that you could have this conversation. And, and she did, felt great, and went to camp with her kids. And, but they, she, wasn't, she was in that transition. She wasn't a club leader yet. She was taking kids from her school and then was gonna step into ministry the next year. So, so it was a great conversation, and that's really what I would love. Like when I think of teacher leader champion, that's what I want to do. Be a resource. For I want to be a resource yes. for you guys and for them, because I was I taught in Sunnyside for five years, and I was invited every year, at least once, to come to club. My kids knew I loved Jesus. I had never been involved in Young Life, but I lived 45 minutes away from the school, so I wasn't about to hang out on Monday for four hours after school so I could go drink a gallon of milk with. I mean, that just was not gonna happen, right? The band. But the band game. Well, there you go. It probably wasn't in you know the early 2000s, but. True. <laughs> but if, if that staff person had, if there had been another way for me to be involved, either having campaigners in my room, or hey, let me throw a sweatshirt at you and you could wear it on Mondays, because Sunnyside didn't really have, doesn't have a staff dress code at all. Just things like that, whether I could have supported the ministry without having to step in. There's a teacher leader newsletter that goes out once every three-ish months. So there was just one that got sent out. I try to include like a spiritual thought, you know, not all logistics, but it's the idea that, that the teachers understand the school year is a marathon, not a sprint. And so, if, and Paul said to run in such a way as to win the race. So anyone who's done any distance running, and I've only done it once in my life, but you know you got to plan pit stops. If you don't plan them and they're not there, you won't make it. And so my encouragement to them is to look at the whole year and plan spiritual pit stops for themselves. Mm -hmm. That to have one in the fall, and that's when I put our dinner, to have one in the winter, hey, regional retreat, and then Yakima's planning another one in the spring. Like That's how we look at the year. Um, for the specific purpose of getting together with like-minded leaders who are on campus for their home, for their jobs, because it is a different beast than being on staff and being a different than being a regular volunteer. Um, so in those meetings, we can speak specifically to those challenges. That's the heart and the the hope for that.